everything's gonna be just fine. Just fine. Fine. You're not afraid of the dark. Are you? What is up, YouTube? It's your girl, Evelyn, and welcome to a video no one asked for, no one probably wants, and will likely get demonetized immediately. I don't care. If you've never seen a disturbing movie iceberg video before, it's when your favorite YouTuber traumatizes themselves by watching the most disturbing movies in existence, so you don't have to. Most iceberg videos start with the least disturbing film and end with the most disturbing. But because I'm a little bitch, this iceberg is also a little bitch. So if you're a disturbing movie iceberg video connoisseur, you're probably going to want to head out. Bye, bitch. <laughs> also, even though I won't be spoiling every movie, I will be spoiling most of them. So make sure to check out the timestamps in the description. The first tier is Good Night Sleep, which consists of movies that, after watching, I was able to enjoy a good night's sleep. Open your mouth. Say, ah. Oh. <laughs> Windows is what happens when the resident neighborhood lesbian develops a crush on the shy, mousy straight girl down the hall. The lesbian writes her poetry, brings her flowers, and hires a thug to assault her while tape recording it, so the resident neighborhood lesbian can listen to the assault over and over and over again. <laughs> The f Windows is on the list, not because the movie itself is disturbing, but because the premise is so incredibly f***ed up. But hey, at least the cinematography is cute. Feel that? Your heart racing. What do you feel? Steady. Exactly. The Retreat and What Keeps You Alive are two Canadian horror films about lesbians in the woods being hunted, so I just combined them into one. Although, to be fair, the lesbians in The Retreat survive, whereas the lesbians in What Keeps You Alive do not, in fact, keep alive. Technically, What Keeps You Alive is the better film, but I like The Retreat more because it unabashedly rips off every other horror movie in existence. Also, it is extremely dark, and by that, I mean you can't see shit. I'm sure they were trying to make it scarier, but I watched the entire second half of the movie sitting less than a foot away from my television, and afterward, I went straight to bed and slept like a baby. With the light up, it's less Tier 2 is This Is Uncomfortable, and it's made up of films that made me uncomfortable. I wouldn't say these movies freaked me out, but they definitely left me with a weird feeling in the pit of my stomach. Shady is about an unpopular girl who catches the attention of a popular girl. Soon after, the two become besties, and eventually more than besties. But I have to warn you, this movie sneaks up on you. It starts off as a bittersweet queer coming of age, and then halfway through, the plot takes a hard left, and it gets disturbing fast. But even still, Shady isn't super graphic. In fact, the most disturbing elements of the film are found within the girl's abusive relationship, as well as the up things one of them does, like kidnapping, torture, and murder. And even though the ending gets kind of weird and unnecessarily supernatural, Shady is a well-acted and super creepy movie. Veronica is about a troubled young woman who's receiving therapy in a remote cabin in the woods. Really? Just know that if you watch this film, you will have to suspend a whole lot of belief Veronica is a lot like Windows, in the sense that the movie itself isn't disturbing, but the subject matter is. Actually, if I'm being honest, the movie is kinda hot. There's these two women alone together in a cabin, there's sexual tension and sexual frustration, there's even a solo sesh. It's hot. But once the root of Veronica's issues come to light, the movie becomes disturbing and just plain sad. If something isn't fun, you don't do it. If something's fun, you love it, and if you love something, it must be fun. Heavenly Creatures is a film I've talked about a lot on this channel, so I don't think I need to go over why it's disturbing. But Fund is a much more obscure and nihilistic version of Heavenly Creatures that also came out in the 90s and was also based on true events. Essentially, these two girls, who are very obsessed with each other, decide to murder an old woman. The difference is, these girls do it for the fun of it. They just thought taking someone's life would be fun, which to me makes fun far more disturbing 
disturbing than heavenly creatures. Not to justify the murder in heavenly creatures, but I can at least wrap my head around the why. But in fun, there is no reason. And even though the murder scene is laughably bad, it was somehow more horrifying than the much more realistic and brutal murder scene in Heavenly Creatures. I was wondering if I could give you some um, missing posters of my daughter. It's funny, I wouldn't have thought that you're a Nirvana fan of all the classical music you were playing before. God, could you imagine seeing them live? <laughs> It'd be really intense. I had goosebumps just thinking about it. Allure is a movie that basically gives you a front row seat to the act of a child. This is such a hard movie to watch because it feels so incredibly icky and wrong. Whenever Evan Rachel Wood's character is alone with the girl she's it gave me the chills in a very bad way. Allure is unnerving and unsettling, and if there is anything about the premise of this film that you find triggering, you might want to skip it. Sister, My Sister and Murderous Maids are two versions of the same story based on true events. In the 1930s, the Pappin sisters were maids who stabbed their employers to death a lot. They were also f***ing each other. Inappropriate. I like both movies, but I prefer Sister My Sister because I love me some Jodie May. And I'll be honest, I've never really found the Pappin sister's story to be all that disturbing. Like, no, you shouldn't kill your shitty and abusive employers. Also, you probably shouldn't f*** your sister. Although, it's not like you can get her pregnant. I'm joking. Please don't f*** your sister. Anyway, there is definitely something wrong with me. It's like forgetting the words. Tier 3 is existential dread and nihilistic machinations. So, this should be fun. These are movies that make me question existence and worry that life is ultimately meaningless. Everyone strap yourselves in! I love Aniara, but it is a film that makes me feel some type of way. Set sometime in the distant or near future, a bunch of people are on a huge spaceship on their way to Mars because the Earth is dying. Unfortunately, their ship gets knocked off course, and they slowly come to the horrific realization that it will take thousands of years for their ship to get back on course, which means they will never ever leave the ship. So yeah, Aniara is a bit bleak, to say the least. but. I I love it because it forces you to consider existence from a different perspective. Is existence for the sake of existence enough? Movies like this one and Johnny Got His Gun really mess with me for days after I watch them because I can't help but put myself in the characters' positions and wonder what I would do if it were me. Sunchoke is an unpleasant movie from start to finish, and it seems to have no purpose other than existing, which makes it perfect for this tier. A woman is being kept in her house and watched over by her caretaker. We never really find out why either. All we know is that this woman needs to be watched, otherwise, she'll do something bad. And that's like 95% of the movie. The last 5% is the woman doing something very bad to another woman with whom she's obsessed with. And that's it. Bad lady does bad things for no reason. I'm gonna stick by you, whatever you do. They can make me good. I make it evil before you make me good. Butterfly Kiss, or as I like to call it, the Punishment movie, is about another bad lady doing bad things. But this time, she has a sidekick and maybe even a reason. The main character of this film is a serial killer on a killing spree. During her spree, she meets a naive and lonely woman who eventually joins her, and that's more or less it. But what makes Butterfly Kiss so fascinating is that the main character herself seems to be suffering from some form of existential dread. She wants to get caught. She wants someone somewhere to notice that she is indiscriminately taking lives without really even covering her tracks. If her existence matters, Matters, then surely she wouldn't be allowed to. Someone would stop her, God, or the police, or her girlfriend, but no one does. To me, the most disturbing thing about Butterfly Kiss isn't all the killing, but the things that come out of the main character's mouth. Because as troubling as I find her words to be, they also feel very true. 
Beyond the Hills is a bleak, overly long, and depressing Romanian film about two childhood friends who grew up in an orphanage and eventually become lovers. That is, until one of them decides she wants to be a nun, which leads to all kinds of awful exorcism-related shenanigans. I'll be honest, Beyond the Hills might be the least fun film I've ever watched. This movie is so incredibly heavy, it almost suffocates you. And who knows? Maybe that's what they were going for. I also believe the movie was based on true events, which is horrible because botched exorcism has to be one of the worst ways to die. It's time to take a quick break from the iceberg and delve into a few lesbian-adjacent disturbing movies. These are films that aren't quite gay, but the vibes are there. Perfect Blue is a brilliant 90s anime that was super ahead of its time about a young pop singer trying to shed her good girl image in order to pursue a serious acting career. Unfortunately, she has a, uh, super fan who wants her to remain an innocent pop idol, and things get very dangerous not only for her, but for everyone around her. Perfect Blue is the only movie on the list I really don't want to spoil because it's so good. And if you've never seen it, I can't recommend it highly enough. But be warned, it might be animated, but it's still f***ed up. If you put Butterfly Effect, Final Destination, and Kill Bill into a blender, you wouldn't get Tag, but you might get something kind of close. Tag is about a young girl who causes destruction and chaos everywhere she goes, and it is one of the most unique films I've ever watched. It's like a surrealist, horror, thriller, dystopian, coming-of-age drama. And even though I had no idea what was going on for like 90% of the movie, I loved every unpredictable minute of it. But I will admit, it. The violence is a lot. In fact, the movie is so violent so often, it eventually desensitizes you to its own violence. Which is one way to do it, I suppose. Climax is a strange ass movie that I'm not even sure belongs on this list, but I refuse to have watched it for no reason. Although, after I watched it, I did not want to be around another human being for a while. Climax is about a group of dancers who gather at a remote and empty school to rehearse a dance, but not long after, their night becomes a nightmare when they realize their sangria has been laced with LSD. Climax is one of those movies that you want to be over the second it starts you know it's going to be a bad time and you just want to get it over with. And even though Climax is definitely disturbing, it wasn't nearly as disturbing as I expected. Okay, sure, someone is set on fire, someone else breaks their own bones, a brother and sister, a uh, bone, there's a predatory lesbian being predatory, but I don't know. I guess I just expected more. Tier 4 is I Think I'm Going to Be Sick, and these are movies that are a little on the graphic side, but not that graphic because I refuse to ruin my life for a YouTube video. Harder. Harder. Oh. Why are you stopping? That's his limit. He's fine. I'm not done. Dude, he's had enough. I'll tell you when I got what I need. The Sound of Violence is about a young woman who really likes The Sound of Violence. There's a little more to the plot, but that's really the basis. She gets her rocks off by hearing someone being hurt, and eventually she starts making her own music, so to speak. The entire movie is fairly gory, but it starts with a family massacre scene that I thought was far more disturbing than anything else that happened afterward. This is also a movie that requires some healthy suspension of belief because some of it is just dumb as hell. Be that as it may, it's still a nasty little movie. What is happening to me? It's gonna be okay. Something is wrong. Something is wrong with me. Lizzie, I know, that's why we need to get you help. What's happening? Oh my God. I'll be honest. I hated the perfection. Not because it's stupid. I mean, it is stupid, but I hated the perfection because it could have been a really, really good movie. Two high achieving classical musicians meet and fall in love, except one of them is deeply disturbed and has a thing for torture. They then embark on an international road trip together and things get really f***ed up really fast. That is a good disturbing movie. What happens after that though is not good. But it is gory. I think they end up sewed together or something equally stupid. High Tension is by far my favorite movie of this tier. It's a grisly French slasher film with the biggest of plot holes, but 
I still love it. It's super violent, but also super tense. In fact, the first time I watched High Tension, I literally held my breath during certain scenes so that the character wouldn't get caught by the killer. I was into it. Again, plot holes as big as the sun, but if you can suspend your belief, this is probably one of the nastiest, funnest thrillers I've ever watched. Tier 5 is Never Again. These are films I will not watch ever again. Based on true events, I, Olga Hepnerova is about a young woman who commits mass murder by driving her truck through a crowd of people on the sidewalk. This is just a very unsettling movie about a very unsettling girl. Watching this movie felt like I was being punished for something. It also made me extremely angry. I won't lie. After she commits the mass murder, part of me wanted the bystanders to drag her out of the truck and beat the hell out of her, which is wrong. I know. Beat her. Anywho, watching I, Olga Hepnerova once was more than enough for me. I understand that I am a classless peasant who doesn't appreciate the intricacies and depth of French cinema. I know that about myself, but I still watch Titan for some reason. The thing about Titan is if you're going to make me watch this serial killing bitch have sex with a car, get pregnant, and assume the identity of a missing boy, you damn well better show her exploding while giving birth to a Tonka truck. But no, the one thing that would have possibly made me like this movie did not happen. Therefore, it is a one and done. Tier 6 is Deeply Regret. These are movies that I deeply regret watching. Granted, there's only two movies in this category, but if I had a time machine, I would go back and stop myself from watching them. Zero out of 10 would not recommend anyone watch either of the following films. Murders is a difficult film to discuss because at its core, I do believe it's a very good movie, but I also believe no one should ever watch it for any reason. If you're fortunate enough to live a life where you do not have to witness someone's skin being removed, I think you should continue living that life. If you watch Martyrs, you will no longer be living that life. By the way, Martyrs is about a woman who, after being abused as a child, seeks vengeance against those who hurt her. Unfortunately, the tables get turned. How the turntable. And she finds herself in a very bad situation. I could have gone my entire life without ever having watched Martyrs. If you haven't watched Martyrs, don't watch Martyrs. But you can watch the remake with Spencer though. That one's fine. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I am, in fact, a little bitch. But I wanted to challenge myself to watch at least one movie that could actually be on a real disturbing movie's iceberg, a la Windigoon, Mr. GG, or Nick's Fears. So I forced myself to watch My Chan's Daily Life, a movie based on a manga about a maid who possesses regenerative self-healing properties, aka if you cut her head off, it will grow back. Now, poor My Chan works for a sadistic husband and wife who get sexual gratification from harming her in all kinds of up ways. In the film, a new maid is hired, and she takes a liking to Mai Chan. And I guess you could say they have a romance, although I really hate to use the word romance in reference to anything about this movie, but they definitely have something going on. Now, previously, I've thrown around the word torture without thinking much about it. But now I know I was not using that word correctly because this movie is actual torture. It's chainsaw f***ing, eyeball eating, biting tongues out, so much bleeding. It's ripping out intestines with no anesthesia, then eating those same intestines because this is a disgusting f***ing movie. Thank God it was shot on an iPhone 5S because I could not have watched this in HD. Anywho, don't watch this movie, kids. Don't read the manga. Just say no. That is it for the iceberg, and I'm postponing my patron shoutouts until the next video because it just feels wrong to do it in this one. I am curious though as to how many of these films you guys have actually watched. So let me know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.